Yeah. We're back on the Captain's Log. Dan Cummins. Thanks, buddy. Hello, Thanks man. for joining me. Thank you. You didn't have a choice. I mean, that's what I tell everybody. <laughs> you're really not you're really not just like, you know, sitting outside waiting for me to pick you up. You're you're here ready to impress uh, in Fort it. Myers. Yeah, man. For the Happy Murder Tour. How'd you come up with the name? I, I wish I did. It was my uh Joe Eschenbaum, my agent at uh I know Joe. I know Joe oh, yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. He, he uh he thought of it. So I'm bad he about it. He came up with the Happy Murder Tour. Just from watching my stand up over the years, yeah. he's like uh let's uh, he came up with this concept of doing like a picture of me in a little bit of like a bloody suit. Yeah. Just because uh I've done I didn't even really realize it. It's like I forget I forget what bits I've done on previous albums to the point that I'll be writing something I'm like, Oh that's funny. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, you idiot. You did the same thing three albums ago. Because the same thoughts are rolling around my head. And it's, it's a lot of uh, hatred of rude strangers. Right? So yeah. And so, so yeah, I shared that on did your you page. Did you get it? So that's uh, good. We, na- we nailed it, buddy. Ryan's a tech whiz. We nailed it. Social media wizard. I ah, have to stop for a live. second. Yeah, it's live. It is. It out. And uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Because it's it looks a little fuzzy. I don't know. But maybe there's something going on. Maybe there's something in the air. Maybe you're... Your murder wasn't such a... <laughs> <laughs> Facebook makes Facebook yeah, nervous. Yeah, Facebook's like, damn, maybe I shouldn't have put happy murders. You know what's funny is we got we couldn't boost that this picture of me in blood on uh, Facebook. But yet, horror movies about way worse things than I'm talking about are action movies that have way more oh, violence than I'm talking like about. crazy. They get boosted all the time, so it's like a weird thing. It's a... You know what is a weird thing is sometimes um, they block my alcohol company which it's not even and i'm not even doing anything about it like right just because you mentioned alcohol. yeah yeah they won't let me do something like really there's nothing on there but somebody can post something about being drunk or whatever it's all these weird rules i i feel like most of the oh man why are they being so annoying about this yeah 99 percent of the time it comes back to nervous about litigation well no and you know what it is somebody already sued them for it you yeah. can't tell yep. me that they're not getting five thousand lawsuits yep. a day Exactly. Like, that's the problem. People are crazy about trying to make money by not working. What is up yep, with that? Yep. Just go to work. That's the kind of stuff that makes me murderous. Yeah. Stuff like that, like frivolous litigation. You know, somebody's uh, busting their ass. They're working hard to, you know, like, you're an entrepreneur. You know, right. you have to grind. You have to work really hard to make your own thing. And then somebody else uh, just wants an easy paycheck and then it just ruins dude. somebody's lives. Non stop. I, I feel like with that litigation stuff, if you sue for something stupid, if you take that to court, it should be like, okay, we're gonna let you go through with it, but if but if it doesn't, if you don't win, then there, you then you have to pay them there is what some. you're trying to get. There is some. There's there some, is some lawsuits. Oh, you like know that. what? I I did read an article about something about like that where it's just starting, yeah. where some people are getting in trouble for suing yeah. for the wrong things. Finally. Yeah, there's some there is some situations where it actually uh, works like that, but in the, in other situations, like you get these Morgan and Morgan guys, right? They find this little nichey little thing, and they they'll they'll drop so much media attention about it that everybody comes out of the woodwork that that has happened to right, somehow. Right, class action. Yeah, 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 miraculously. But yet the the key is is like if they find one of those people, right? Then literally they do have a lawsuit, and you can go after like five Man. times you know what it's worth. Yeah. So yeah. they so they just like there's focus a weird, on that. There's a weird thing with some of these companies. It's like uh, okay, like the um. The Boeing thing right now, they're talking about like these planes are like, how how could they have let these planes go through? You know, how could they, yeah. you know, like when someone crashed, they didn't intentionally think like, ah, these are probably crash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this plane's going ah, down and taking my whatever. stock with it. Come yeah, on. Whatever. No, they're trying their best. There's this weird thing with like certain medical malpractice where like people aren't allowed to make mistakes. And it's right. like, dude, it's, it's human nature. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's like, it's going to happen. But then what? Like, so they have to be perfect. Or they get sued to the point that they could lose their career. It's ridiculous. Like it the really standards is. certain professions are held to. It's like, yeah, there's no guarantee that you're going to be. I want to. I'm always trying to not swear right now, but I can't. Yeah, I try not to you swear. Try to swear. Uh, but I mean, I'm fighting it. I'm yeah, fighting yeah. It. But, but like, there's. And Gary V gets away with swearing. Speaking of Gary V, we talked about him. How does he get away with swearing so much on the freaking web? I love that because I swear so much. And yeah, I, but the, his content still doesn't get out there. And I love it, be, but, but yeah, exactly. Like, like but, and, I, and I love what he represents that way because he's. I've watched a lot of his videos about people being like, "Oh, Gary, if you if you just didn't swear, you could reach this bigger audience." I saw that whole show, and he's like, "Yeah, but that's not me. Right? I'm not being authentic." And I've always felt that way too, where it's like, "But you know, t- he did break down, and he started a whole nother thing where he doesn't swear." Really? Yeah, I don't he know. started uh, a whole what? nother YouTube page. And uh, it's all clean now because he wants the corporate money, baby. Uh, he's got enough money. He's, Gary, That's no. what he did, though. You did. I saw you because I got the email from you, brother, about uh, his new his new corporate clean YouTube page. That's funny. I yeah. Have, 
see, I just have no interest. That's what I like about like new media, like well, like the podcast, for example. Sometimes people would write in too and be like, "Dude, I, I would share this with my family more. I would like this is great content oh my for my kids." God. If you just didn't swear, I'm like, "There's plenty of people that don't swear. Go find them." This is what I like to do. This is authentic to me, and it, and it resonates with uh, some people who don't mind more. And just for me personally, I just know that the kind of person who's going to be offended by an f bomb isn't going to like me that much anyway. Right. So fuck them. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Two you know, things. Like, One, I want to know how much research you do for every episode. But yeah. speaking of uh, content that's not going to be shared, right? Yeah. I do it on Tuesdays, Ask the Doctor. Mm. And, and sometimes we get questions. I have this doctor, Dr. Dollar, who's a, a expert urologist. And we get questions. Some of the questions I love. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, you know what? I If I talk about them on Facebook... Uh, nobody's going to share that because they don't want that on their page. Oh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's sometimes it's men's well-being or right, sexual right. health or get up, ED. Uh, like yeah, they, about it. they love watching, but they don't want to share it to yeah. other people because they can't post that on their page. Yeah. So you, you do have to, like, kind of figure out what people are going to be able to accept on their page, right? Right, right. You got to find your niche. Yeah, and sometimes your niche or your audience or your whatever is, like, it's just people who like outrageous things. I mean, there is that group. People who they almost want it to be more profane. I don't know. It's like, um, by the Gary way, Gary V. Speaking that, sorry, yeah. like he just is like just. We were just talking about this. Like his, I like his whole message of don't overthink it. Correct. Just do. Yeah. That's and what he I, says that's like, what I got to work on all the time. What you're doing every day is not the same thing as what somebody else is doing. Right. So you start posting your yeah. day. It's interesting to people. Right. Like who wants to yep. watch? Who thought that watching people open up gifts? was a great thing true, or play video true, games as true. a kid I hated waiting to play a game me too I'm like damn it let me play yeah. I don't want to watch you play yep. a game yep. now it's a freaking thing my son on the PS4 he's more interested in the replay of what he's just done than him doing it right so like he'll play a game mostly to watch the highlights of the game he's just played like he wants to even like I'm like you just did that That's like but it's, but it's different now it's like I think about that too my wife and I wear to me, like my life is just my life. I, I've had to get this out of my out of my head. I'm like, who wants to see this? But then I remember that, like, okay, if you're working, like, I have a little office that I've made myself of my yeah. podcast with like weird, right? Speaking of things which, on the wall, Dan Cummins is our dolls. guest, and uh, his podcast blew up. Give them all your information so that way I don't screw it up. Oh, Tell yeah. them how they can find you because they, they do follow uh, you and they're going to watch your podcast. Oh, it gets like a million views a freaking episode. You're crazy. It's uh, Time Suck is, uh, you can get the app, the Time Suck app, which is T-I-M-E-S-U-C-K, but it's also, you know, Spotify, all the regular play, uh, places. Yeah, Stitcher, iTunes, you yeah. can find it, download the podcast. Dan it, Cummins in Naples going to be at Off The Hook mm -hmm. Comedy Club tonight, one show only. And you call this the Happy Murder Tour. Happy Murder Tour. Why? Uh, just because it's, you know, I, I speak a lot about... Um, uh, You're not murdering fantasy. anyone, right? I'm not murdering we, anyone. Just not about, tonight? Not tonight. Okay. Violent fantasies about people who are just rude, basically. I have, a, I have a, a, a a temper, I guess, towards people who are just not polite. And, you, and hecklers. Selfish, narcissists. You just, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hecklers aren't going to stand a chance. No, heck, I don't have... A, luckily a problem too much with hecklers right that's because you're funny i find people that aren't funny have well, more that's hecklers funny true people lose interest yeah people lose yeah interest. they that's think that true. they need to spice up the show that's true you're that's sitting true. there awkward silence this with some with five people at the table that you brought to the show yes you might be more tempted to say something because the guy on stage isn't entertaining you i know that that is that is the the best thing to not have too many hecklers just to keep the show entertaining and funny because it's one thing if like if someone's yelling out or a disruption when you're when you're doing really well right like with an audience then it's really easy to be like dude what are you doing put the spotlight on them and like well you're not funny and it's like dude were you not hearing yeah. the laughs it's like you're just too dumb to understand what's happening like you're the problem absolutely very different than if it's a dead quiet room and then someone's like you're not funny because i've been in the back of rooms watching other Ooh. comics and when that happens and my thought is yeah they're right yeah. That's, they are right. <laughs> you know? And it's like, if for, as a club <laughs> so, owner, uh, it's like sickening. Uh, I'm like, yeah. damn it, dude. Make somebody laugh or yeah. you know, female, whatever. Whoever's on stage, it's like, as a club owner, you're cringing. Like, oh my uh, God, why is I not hearing like just roars of laughter? Didn't they hear the last guy on stage like just crush? Dude, I watched Hecklers. This is years ago in, in a really kind of rough bar gig in Lewis and Idaho. It's like I came up doing these kind of rougher small town yeah. gigs. And uh, I've never heard of, I don't even remember this guy's name. I never heard of him after this. I think I saw the moment his comedy career died. <laughs> like the exact moment. 
it was. I will uh, tell you a funny comedy. Oh. You this, you'd think the Korea would have died, but now it's now one, one of the biggest ever. This guy, uh, he, I, I watched him. He was opening up for me. He was like supposed to a half an hour. He had had a really tough set the night before, like half an hour of no laughs. He he was doing props. He had this like little thing of props, and I saw him like seven minutes of no laughs. He just like looks so defeated. The crowd is not with him. People are yelling stuff, and he just like on stage, just like does this, and he slowly puts his props back in his little suitcase. And he called looks, it a day. Lo- looks around, doesn't even say anything. Just looks around, grabs and just walks off of the stage. No way. Walks out of the room, never to be seen again. That's it. He was done. He was like, this is not my thing anymore. Nope, just he, out. I instead to, of oh. quitting a job, he quit life. He quit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just bailed, dude. He quit his family. Just like, oh, my God. Oh, it was so. But you, the thing oh. is, is like, if you walk out of the office, that's what you do, that's right? You're do. like, hey, boss, it's not for me anymore. Right, right. What I, lo- I love that he did a mid show. Mid show. You just gotta go. It was great. In his this way, is way. my job. Ah, Sorry. I'm, I'm not gonna this. do it while I'm doing press. I'm not gonna do it while I'm in my hotel room yep. getting ready for a show. Mid show. While I'm mm. on stage, I'm out. I'm letting everybody know. Don't this like is it. my last shit. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. That's great. It was good to witness. Was, yeah. You know, and and to be and this guy, he was a nice guy on stage, but it comedy probably wasn't for him. So right. so my my mind you mean was like, because people weren't laughing. It, yeah, and it did. wasn't funny. It was it was really bad. It was really if you really do a bad. comedy show and people aren't laughing. Comedy's not your thing. Yeah, that's the thing I'm amazed by too. Is like uh, when you start off in a scene, when you get you know open mic or whatever, but you get guys. It's one thing if you get some guy who's struggling to find his voice. You can tell he's funny. He's finding out how to yeah. translate it yeah. on stage, and it takes time. Or you're working on new material and it's right? not hidden. But then there's the other guy who you know you oh my god go i know what you're gonna say and they're not doing well and then you come back like five years later and it's the same jokes oh no still i'm ha- not doing well i have like, one Dude. better what happens when they don't do well and they get off stage and they're like i crushed i, crushed. I killed it. rabbit ears i'm like what what did you we crush? call that rabbit ears oh my god like i don't understand wait me and you just watched the same show right how did i miss all the crushing dude and i'm baffled but it happens often yeah Especially just, with comics coming up, and it's like, wait, how are you, you gonna get good if you don't know you what think good? You think you crushed? Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Okay, sit back, sit on this chair right here where I just sat, yeah. and listen to this guy go up and watch every single person in the audience fall off their chair, right? Laughing. And you know what? And those guys who are doing those kind of shows, nine times out of ten. They're not as happy when they come off stage. They think about the joke. They're like, hit. dude, I could have hit it so hard. Like I missed. Yep. I should have said this yep. right there, right? Because that's the kind of mind you have to have to do well. It's like, uh, yeah, the guys who are usually killing aren't coming off stage going like, man, I'm the best. How did you get into it? How did you get into comedy? Like, you just told yourself you wanted to be a comedian. You know, <laughs> uh, I wish it was some story of like, you know, I wanted to do it for years and everything. Um, I just, I graduated with a degree in psychology from Gonzaga Same years here. ago. Went into psychology some, and yep. criminal justice. Oh, okay. I could be like a freaking- Profiler. Yeah, like on your show. Yeah, man. You need to get me on, dude. Here Mine I go. Hunter. I'm right here. I'm interviewing right now. Mine hunter. Put me on the list. <laughs> and I uh, I wanted to go into social work. I did go into social work initially, and then I just, I didn't like it. It was fun to study, but I just wasn't wired right to do it for a job. And then I was just like, am I gonna go back to school? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do that? And my ex-wife was uh, like, I'd done comedic theater in college. And she's like, well, that was fun. You know, that was funny. People like you, uh, why don't you try it? And it was totally at her Wait, suggestion. you were already out of college and everything? Mm-hmm. And you just thought like- Just on a whim. Just, yeah. Just went and just Do you have a shot. good relationship with the ex? Yeah, we do actually. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you could thank her for, for, for yeah, making- thanks. Yeah, for thanks all this for money. started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for making him famous. We love you. <laughs> But yeah, she just thought like I should give it a go and uh, and then did. And then it was always like, okay, this is fun. We'll see how long this lasts. And then as I got into it, I got more and more, uh, just kind of fell in love with it after I started doing it. Yeah. But I was never a guy who watched that much stand up or to this day. I, 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 I never was either. Much. Yeah. I opened up a comedy club and I couldn't name two comics. I, I knew like it. Eddie what? Murphy and Richard Pryor. Okay. And that was it. People like, oh, you, you're going to open up comics? You must love comedy. I'm like, eh, I love money. <laughs> yeah, I but I honesty, learned yeah. to like comedy a yep. lot better. Yep. Like, and now I love it. I right? just love, I just love the creative freedom because I was in a little like band in college, and we weren't great. It, we it, used to, did you have stage fright? No, uh, no, I, I, I uh, oh, you were a musician a little bit, so you yeah. had already been on stage. Yeah, so I like that's parties. different. That's different, I right? Because you'd that. already been on, you've been like a rock star. Well, for like in our little campus, we had fun at like parties, yeah, keggers and stuff. 
and I loved it. Like we did our own songs, you know. Rehearsing was fun. It was such a. And then when we graduated. What did you play? Uh, I played like initially. At, by Say the, the end, guitar. But it was a guitar. By oh, the, by the, by, this guy, he's freaking funny. He's handsome. He plays the guitar. <laughs> like seriously, dude, come on. And, but and then when we graduated, everybody else went to their regular job, and I was like, oh, but I thought we were gonna do this more, and it just bummed, <laughs> it just bummed me out. That, that nobody wanted to pursue it further. Yeah. And what I liked about stand up is nobody gets to take it away from you. Like like the like right. it's just you and you live or die on your stuff. Yep. And that's what I love. It's like the camaraderie the camaraderie of a band was great. But, you know, one person can leave and then yeah. you're screwed. It's a solo act now. Yeah. 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 You're just bringing the heat yourself. And it's it sucks when you eat it. Because then it's like you stew in your own failure and you have no one to share yeah, it with. Yeah, but you're not eating it these days anymore. Like, like but, I won't, for, but for a long time. But yeah. for a long time. I won't know? mention any names, but this dude is okay. selling out theaters on a daily basis. He literally bombed so bad that I went from headlining. Okay, let's just rewind. Okay. Only four years ago. Maybe five years ago. And wow. today he's selling 2,000 seats a night. Across the country, I got after the after the, on fire after the video. I got to find out who this dude is. Okay, he bombed so bad. I moved him from headline oh. to feature to oh. he barely finished the weekend to that's rough. He may be quitting comedy. Fast forward today, superstar in the industry. Did he tweak his act? Obviously, or, or no? Uh, or he just, just was his... having a bad week, man. Okay, okay, I don't okay. know what it was. Everything just came crashing down. Yeah. Nothing worked. Today, I mean, a superstar in the industry. Wow. Huge. Wow. How crazy. That is crazy. It's a great turnaround. It is so crazy. So you never know, like, you never know, one, what someone's going through, point of the story. Yeah. Two, like, just because they were not funny at that point. Yeah. Like, I was told how funny these this one headliner was. Yeah, yeah. And who was so unfunny that weekend uh, that... It, did not work out. That is a rough thing, man. When someone's going through personal stuff. Yeah. I know. I, I, years ago, I was opening up for a buddy of mine who took me on the road, who was going through just was started going through a divorce, but blindsided him. Yeah. He didn't know. He was super down that week, and the uh, and it's and like the dance asked puppet. Us, you got to make people laugh. Oh yeah, just what I want to do. I know. It's tough. It's weird. It's weird for me. It's like the stage is such an escape for me, where. I remember, like, uh, my ex, like, same thing. Like, it surprised me. She told me she was going. And then she told, she told me, like, two hours before a show. That she was bailing. She was, yeah, bailing. Yeah. We had, like, kids. It was, like, my worst nightmare. Mine just said, don't come back. <laughs> Literally. And I didn't go back. That, wow. No, no, nothing. Wow. Just, like, this isn't going to work out. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back to work. And then don't come back in tonight. Wow. Next night, don't come back in tonight. Eight weeks of that, I didn't go back. Wow, yeah. I was like, whoa. It's crazy. So that was for me, blindsided too. Yeah, and for, yeah. for me, work was my escape. It was like, I was sad, you know, uh, regular life, but then my shows actually were fine because I'm like, well, at least this is one hour. Right? I mean, I guess it would have been different if my whole act would have been how happy we were being married. Yeah. That would have sucked. But my, right. But my act was about, <laughs> about like weird, absurd stuff, you know, that didn't have anything to do with her. Is that like a fat guy that gets skinny? He doesn't have any more jokes? Right. That would have been the same. You'd yes. been screwed. Yes. Not funny, but you you bailed. You Dude. missed it. You did it. You, yep. you dodged a bullet. I, now you're more famous. I, yeah, I can talk about my own weird stuff. That's, that's funny. Oh, and it was... It was uh, I, the yeah. only thing I can relate to that is like if you're if you're having a bad day and you have to get on stage and still do great comedies. I had a I was actually a fishing captain. I'm really captain. Okay, I wondered about that. And yeah. I and I had to take people fishing for a living. And I did that. I was on the boat straight for like seven years, from '98 to like I don't know 2005 or whatever. Every yeah. day I took people fishing. Nobody goes fishing pissed off. Like it's like going to a comedy show. They're not there to not have a good time. Right. So people go fishing. They want to always like, oh, it's a great weather. I'm from freaking right. North Dakota. It's the middle of February, and, and you it's gotta eight. match that. You yeah. Gotta, like, so be you up with gotta them. go and like act like you're not having a bad day, even yeah. though it's like it's in their mind gorgeous, but it's like 50 degrees. The wind's blowing 20 miles an hour, and yeah. you know you're not gonna catch very many fish. Right. You have to convince them and yourself, hey, we're gonna do this today. Let's go make it happen. Same thing as you getting on yeah. stage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I never thought of that with the fishing guy, but absolutely. It's like, you got to be up. That's a weird analogy, but you have to be a fisherman to figure that out. Right. Yeah, yeah it works. It works. All right, right guys. Man. Well, I'm going to be up. I'm going to be up. I'm, I, and I, I am having fun. Yeah. I'm having a good time. Maybe we'll go fishing. 
You don't have any time. You're here for one night. You no. give me one night. It's like a one night stand. Guys, off the hook comedy club. Dan Cummins, don't miss Happy Murder Tour. Happy Murder I'm Tour. so excited to see it tonight. Off the hook comedy.com for tickets. And uh, I appreciate it, man. I can't wait Thanks, to. Uh, I'm going to start following every one of your tweets, everything on Instagram. How can they find you on Instagram? Dan Cummins Comedy on Instagram. Don't miss it, guys. We're out. Later.